In this video here, we're going to learn how to create five cool effects for picture-in-picture -picture using Adobe Premiere Elements version 13. First one here is your basic picture-in-picture. -picture. Let me just go ahead and grab some assets from my little asset folder here. And this is uh, basically me changing the, uh, the oil or the, uh, the air filter on a car. But what I want to do is have um, show the tools and the process along the way. So here I am removing the, uh, the bolt. It would be nice to show the uh, close-up of the wrench and uh, even the socket itself. So right about here, I start talking about what tools to need. So let's grab a close-up of the, of the tool and maybe drag it on top of timeline on the timeline on top of video one. So how these work is they render from top down. So it's gonna render video three if there's anything there, then video two, then video one. So what we're going to do is put all three on top of one another. And of course, I don't wanna see um, just that uh, close up. So all I need to do is make sure that clip is selected. Select the graphics area and you get these little teeny handles here. And if you gingerly hunt for this sort of uh, angled arrow, you can drag that picture or video to whatever size that you want. The ne next one that we grab is this uh, close-up of the tool and I can drag it to a uh, slightly uh, different location or different size or, or whatnot. This is just down and dirty right here. I'm going to put them up here for right now and maybe I'll shorten this top one up a little bit. So what happens is as you uh, render the frames, uh, two in the front, one in the it back, uh, shows a close-up of the tool the and the um, close-up of the wrench socket, socket, socket being applied to the screw at the same one? time. Okay, that's uh, that's basic stuff there. Let's go ahead and schnazz it up just a little bit. So let's go ahead and select this um, video three clip and um, go to your applied effects and let's go to the motion and let me get rid of my project asset window. And here, this little timeline window here is just of that clip and shows me that I can just uh, make changes just to that, um, that wrench there. So maybe at the very beginning, uh, first of all, how you're gonna get into this, probably it's gonna be in the state right here, this, this collapsed state. So you can get to the motion, the opacity, and a few other things. If you click this little stopwatch up here, the show hide keyframe controls, you get this secondary timeline. So I I've always have mine on, so it's kind of on by default. This allows you to control the position, the scale, the rotation, a few other things at a given point in time. So at the very beginning of the clip, let's have the scale, say, be zero, and turn the stopwatch on to capture that setting. Then maybe a little bit into it, a few seconds, we want that clip to be, say, I don't know, 50%, 40%, pick a number, any number. And then we want that 40% to to carry on its way through to near the end of the video, then we'll add this little um, add or move keyframe button to add another uh, one to remember that 40%, and then maybe uh, around near the end, we'll go back down to zero. Now notice as you uh, move the slider, it's automatically going to capture that key point. So now what happens is uh, get a little bit above the video or before the video, and as we play it, you'll see this sort of zoom in and uh, then it will zoom back out at the end of that clip. All right, now we're, now we're getting somewhere. So let's go to this other clip and let's do the same thing there. Let's uh, go to the very beginning of that clip, change its scale to say zero, capture it, and then maybe uh, 40%, just because I like that number. And near the end, we'll capture that 40% and then we'll go back down to zero. So now the zoom effect is going to be applied to both of these uh, small picture-in-picture -picture windows. And another one. This takes an eight eight close-up shot. And of course, you know, one starts, then the other starts. Uh, we can always drag these things around to have one start maybe a little after uh, the other ones. They're not so so simultaneous, if you will. Uh, two in the front. And you can play around these the timelines and the zoom see. scales or the it's zoom speeds all day long and even control uh, where the, uh, the zoom shot uh, occurs. So that's your basic picture-in-picture picture and how to control how the um, uh, how they uh, the zoom and um, and where they go. If you want to control things on on where they um, where the the picture in picture window is, there's also this position up here. So if we go to the very beginning, and I capture that, and I click in this motion window, of course it collapses it by the same time. But if you click in the motion, this little bar up here, you get that little dot. That dot is the position. So you can start here, and then maybe you want that dot to be, I don't know, down here, just some kind of a, a goofy effect. Then we'll capture this again, and then we'll move the, the window 
sort of back up here. So what's going to happen is it is going to I'll just play and you can watch it. It'll zoom and pan at the same time, kind of a weird effect, but you get the idea of how you can use that timeline to control the, uh, the position of things. So maybe you want to have that picture-in-picture uh, picture when you sort of dance around the screen as you're going from one gate to the other or, or whatnot. So that's uh, effect number one using a picture-in-picture -picture effect. All right, picture-in-picture -picture effect number two. I kind of call the Brady Bunch effect where I'm going to have four uh, videos all at the same time all over the screen. So let me just go ahead and pick four. Uh, this is from a Renaissance festival. Um, they may not make any sense, but you'll get the idea of kind of where I'm going with this thing in, in just a second. So what we want to do, uh, let's again drag all of these up on top of one another and um, stack them up. They're varying lengths, but that doesn't really matter for the, uh, the sake of this kind of demonstration here. I'm going to go ahead and make them all the same length just to uh, keep things a little bit uh, easier on the eyes. Also, if you notice, I've got video four and video five. If you're not sure how to get those, uh, the best way to do that is just to, or video seven. Take a video here and drag it up in this sort of blank space up here. Notice the cursor, uh, then it adds video eight, another track for you. So that's the way that you can add. So if you want to have nine, 10, 15 of them all stacked up, you can, uh, you can do that. All right, so here we got uh, one, two, three, four videos stacked up, and because there's music and there's all kinds of stuff going on, I'm going to right-click and delete the audio uh, portion from all of these things here. Otherwise, it'll drive you crazy with the all, all the audio going on. Normally, you'd probably have some kind of a background track or a narration track or something that would uh, keep you from seeing all these things at the same time. All right, so what we're going to do is take one of these videos, and it doesn't really matter which one... Um, well, for this demo, it doesn't matter which one you pick, but you might want to have something to control in the top left, the, the bottom right, and all that. So what I'm going to do is go to the Applied Effects, go to the Motion, and the Scale, I'm going to make him 50%, and the Position, just take your 9, uh, 1920 by 1080 and divide it by 4, both of them, and this top will be 480 by 270, and it will move at the top corner. So we'll go to the next one. Next one down, and it'll be 50% again. And this will be um, 1440 by 270. Just do the math here, and uh, that's how you get these. So if you're not in a full HD, you would obviously pick different numbers based on whatever your uh, uh, video sizes are. So let's go to a 50% here and change him to 810 by 480. Oops, I think it did something wrong there. For 80 by 810. Helps if you read your writing. All right, uh, last one here, 50%. And this is 1440 by 810. All right, so now we have all of our little videos playing here. So if I run this, this is from the previous video. You can see all four of these things going back and forth. There's a guy playing the bagpipes and belly dancers and all that kind of kind of good stuff. All right, what would be neat to put a border in here? Um, unfortunately, Adobe um, uh, Premiere doesn't have a real good way to draw cute little graphics in here, so we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to add a title. So two ways you can either add a title down the very bottom, add titles or text to your clip, or the project assets go up to this little drop-down list where you can add a new title. So I'll just go ahead and drop a title in there, size it accordingly. And uh, then we are going to go to that title. Just double click it to get into it. And with that little select tool thing on the, uh, actually on any one of these um, tabs, let's get rid of the text. You, you might want text, but this part of it, I'm not going to have text on here. Go to the shapes, and uh, you might want to draw a line. It makes the most sense to draw a line, but you don't have a lot of control over the thickness and stuff like that. So I'm going to draw actually a rectangle and uh, make it, you know, whatever size I want. Maybe change the color to something, um, how about white? <laughs> something not, not so annoying. And we'll, uh, you could copy and paste that to get the exact same thickness, or I'm just going to... Uh, grab another uh, rectangle and draw it somewhere in the middle. Now, I'm just eyeballing this right now. Um, you probably would want to spend a little bit more time getting in the right 
right area and right um, size and so on and so forth. But for right now, that is going to be good enough for this, what I call the, the Brady Bunch effect. And of course, you probably have some text on here, have some neat music in here, uh, so on and so forth. But you get the idea of being able to add these four windows here uh, with those little divider bars. Again, I was using uh, 1920 by 1080, so that's why my numbers were... Uh, I just divided you know, these into four quadrants. That's where the center point goes for the top left, the center quadrant for the top right, and so on and so forth. So if you're on a, a different resolution, you're obviously going to have to do a little bit of different math there, but just divide it by four and you're done. That is picture-in-picture picture effect number two. All right, picture and picture effect number three. This is what I call the uh, sort of diagonal split screen type thing. So let's go get some more videos here, my project folder. And uh, these particular videos here aren't really the best to do this with. Um, I'm just gonna pick a couple of these, um, I don't know, wings. Drag them down here, ooh, that's a long one. And uh, we'll drag one wing above the other wing. So definitely depends on how you interpret wings. Some people might think they're from planes. Some people might think they're from birds. Here I have both. Uh, again, let me, let me kill the audio here because I can tell it's awfully loud. It's me sitting on a 747 and um, pretty loud. Okay, so we've got a little, little cute little hummingbird here on one clip and uh, this big airplane on the other clip, which you can't see because... Remember, videos or the system renders from the, the top down. It's going to get whatever is in uh, video two track, render the entire thing. Anything that's left over, it's going to go ahead and uh, hit video two. What I mean by left over is stuff that's um, exposed. So that's the little hint right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our effects tab, and I'm going to find this one called Four Point Garbage Mat. And I think that is in the... Um, I don't really know what section it's in keying, I guess. Who knows why it's in keying, but I guess it is what it is. Uh, there's also 8 point, and a, I think there's a 16 point. So what that is, we're going to drag that on top of the top video because I want to cut part of it away and let the bottom video bleed through. So it gives you these defaults by, uh, or this, this sort of default trapezoidal shapes here. And if I play my video... You can kind of see the hummingbird in the front and what's left of the wing and the engine in the in the very background there. So what we're going to do is make sure that clip is selected. And then up in this bar here, this title bar for this four-point garbage mat, just click in there. Of course, it or collapses itself. Carefully um, expand itself again. And you'll see get these little, um, sort of these little bullseye-looking things on all four corners. What I'm going to do is take that bullseye, the lower left, and drag it down as close as I can to the uh, lower left. And if you want to be precise, just key in the actual value here. So the bottom bottom left key in 0, which it already is, and 1080. One, 1080, because this is high def. Now this one in the middle here, we have a couple options. I can sort of eyeball it in the center here, or even drag it down a little bit, but I want to see that cute little hummingbird. Or I can sit and drag it right on top of that guy here, again, getting the, the math exactly right. So you could leave it in the middle if you wanted to, and then um, the top top left, that will be, uh, what is that, 960? If I can do the math right, by 540? Something tells me that's not right. Yeah, it is right. And of course, uh, you can check all these other numbers to make sure the top right is in the right spot bottom right and so on and so forth. So now what you're going to get is this cute little split screen effect where you have you know the hummingbird on one half and then the engine the airplane on the other. These are probably not the best of clips to use here but you get the idea of how to use this sort of a, a split screen effect. Now if you wanted to do something where you sort of blend this in um, meaning you uh, you start with the full hummingbird and then the the top Top left sort of goes to uh, you know wherever it is. It's full full height. So a couple things you can do. One is notice how I have my um, my timeline uh, expanded here. Uh, once that clip is selected, just hit the page up. It takes you to the very beginning, and we're going to uh, remember that top left. So top left, just turn the little stopwatch on, and go to say somewhere in the middle. You know wherever you want your effect to be. Capture that again. Oops, sorry, wrong one, this little button here. And then maybe at the end, hit page down to get to the end, capture that again. So obviously nothing is going to change here, but if I go to my very first one here by hitting this, go to previous keyframe and change this to zero, zero. 
what's going to happen is you're going to see that clip sort of clip down. And then maybe this is a really, really weird effect here, but we're going to go right back to where it was in just uh, uh, at the very end of it. So it's probably not the best of effects, but you get the idea on how you can use the, um, the keyframes to control um, how that clip clips. And this is not my favorite, but you get the idea on what the, what you can do with the uh, the timeline type uh, type window here. And of course, you can have some music in there. Maybe it uh, transitions from the bird flapping its wings to the uh, the screaming 747 engines, or or whatever you want, or obviously a narration track. So this is using the uh, the four point. I don't know what you call it. Four point garbage mat. There's also an eight point. So if you really want to get crazy and maybe draw. Um, some things around or a 16 point if you want to draw points around uh, I don't know, the state of Florida or something like that you might be able to get close that way you can have a video playing inside of Florida with a, a picture or another video or something like that in the background that's um, picture in picture effect number three alright picture in picture effect number four uh, I don't really know if this qualifies for a picture in picture effect but I did see a question on YouTube on how to uh, mirror things around. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. Let's go to my project asset um, tab and I'm going to bring in a praying mantis and uh, what we're going to do is get this guy to sort of look at himself. So this is a very long clip so let me uh, shorten him up a bit just to make this thing easier to work with. Alright, good enough. All right, so let's delete the audio clip because I don't need it for right now or ever. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of this thing, Control C, Control V, and we're just going to drop one clip right on top of the other. Then we're going to mirror the top clip and then uh, sort of crop part of it away. It's very important that you get these clips to line up exactly, otherwise you're uh, the mirroring effect just won't look very good. So what we got to do next is let's go ahead and add a uh, an effect to mirror it. This will be on our uh, shawl. And we're going to find something called horizontal uh, flip. And it's in here somewhere. It's got to drill through until you get it. Had it. Horizontal flip and we'll drag it to the top one. And then we're going to add the uh, clip sorry crop I keep calling it a clip but it's a crop so let's go ahead and select this and uh, we don't want to crop the left or the top or the right actually we want to crop the right to say 50 percent right in the middle and you see the uh, the top one here on video 2 that's the left hand side and since we've cropped half of it away the stuff on the right hand side is actually video track once it sort of bleeds through. So if I play this thing, you can see Mr. Praying Mantis uh, dancing around and his head will move in a bit and it looks like it's kind of a, a mirrored type of effect. It's kind of a weird to have um, a Praying Mantis do this, but you know you get the idea on, on what it does. Of course he's dancing across the screen now, so that's why it's gone. But if we speed this up just a little bit, you can see, maybe you can see, him sort of come back and, uh, and then it gets very 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 kooky. Uh, of course the tripod is shaking a little bit here uh, but if these clips weren't aligned up exactly you would see some very very strange effects where you can see the uh, the line in the middle of the screen it just doesn't uh, doesn't look very good so just make sure One you take your time you can't really see. and get no. uh, get that uh, the clips lined up exactly. That is picture in picture effect number four. This last picture in picture effect number five is what I call the uh, the striping effect. So as always, let's go get some videos. How about uh, some spiders? How about a um, where are all my spiders? How about a black widow? How about a other spider, a bumblebee, and a uh, a wasp? We'll just add four videos here. Of course, you could do this with as many videos as you want, but you get the idea. Uh, Dia on uh, on this. These are all varying lengths here, like like always. Uh, they don't have to be the same length. I'm going to go ahead and make them uh, one on top of the other. Again, if you forget that you if you have um, you know more videos than you have spots here, just remember you can drag a video up in this this sort of blank area up here, 
and it will add another video for you. Now, I've, I've been doing this a few times. That's why I've got so many uh, blank videos that uh, with no videos. So let's go ahead and make everything the same length just to make it a little easier to, to, to work with here. And then let us uh, go ahead and delete the audio because I have no idea what's on here. Delete audio on all four. You could also um, you just take the volume and make the volume go down to zero if, if you wanted to as well. That way you're, you're preserving your audio. But uh, I know I'm not going to use the audio here because this is just a demo anyway. Uh, so what we have here is we've got um, a, a bumblebee, a wasp, and a, a couple spiders on here. And what I like is to have these things all sort of side by side vertically. This might be uh, better for like a vacation video where you got uh, somebody riding a ride, somebody at uh, the beach, uh, somebody, I don't know, eating dinner, you know, who knows what. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a, um, a crop to each of these things. So... Uh, I have it on my frequently used, but just find it in your uh, your effects. We'll drag a uh, crop to the top one. Another crop to the uh, video on track three. Another crop to video track two. And another crop to video, um, sorry, track number one. All right, now I've got a crop on all of them. And all the crops come in at the same. That's why you still can't see anything. So if I go to my very top one, and I change the left to, um, I don't know. I'm just going to be guessing at some numbers here. Let's just guess, uh, say, make this say 30%. I don't want to crop the top. I don't want to crop the bottom. The uh, 30 plus 25 is, uh, say, 55%. If I did the math right, there's our first one. Move it over here. Actually, uh, let's just make the... Uh, the Make it a little wider so you can see everything. Let's go to our next video and let's crop the uh, the left in some, the right some. And again, you're going to have to sit to, and do the math here on how much to crop these things. I'm not going to spend the time doing the math on this. I think you get the idea on what you would have to do here. This is kind of a bit of a pain here, uh, trying to move all of this stuff around. Um, if you uh, put everything from the top down and make edits from the top down, uh, that's a little bit easier to uh, to manipulate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag him out of the way now that I have both these in the right position here. And I'll go to the next one and I'll just edit the, uh, say, the right and the left and put him somewhere around here. Now normally what I would do is I would get my calculator out and I would figure out what the percentages have to be to get... 25% of the screen if I crop everything in, but you get the idea on where I'm trying to go with this thing. And last but not least, this cute little lady in the background here. Let's go ahead and crop the uh, the left and the right to get just that little black widow in here. Uh, kids, if you ever see a spider that's all black with a red dot on it, do not touch it. Its spider, uh, its sting could kill you. So. Don't even kill it. Just leave the thing alone. Unless it's in your garage, then go get your parents to uh, to get rid of the thing for you. All right, that's my little safety thing of the day. All right, now that we have this, and this is a mess here, I know. Um, I've got these uh, videos all over the place here. They're not lined up at the top. They're not exact 25%. But this is the idea that you could have four of these suckers going at the same time here, all in a nice vertical strip here. And uh, you got the wasp, the bumblebee, a spider. Of course, I don't have it centered very well, but you get the idea on using this crop to uh, control the exact um, uh, location of where all of these things are. Now, to get the uh, the motion or the, the 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 size over here and whatnot, you could play with these uh, these uh, values here to control exactly where things are, the the position, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm not going to spend the time doing that. I think you get the idea of how to. Uh, how to control this at this point. Now it's just a matter of getting the math just right to everything lined up. Now because of these videos are, are so different and even if they were close to being the same you might want some borders in here so how you could do that just like I showed in my previous uh, example here. Let's go ahead and add a uh, a um, what do you call it? Title? And let's just make it the whole length. And let's go ahead and delete that text. You might want text on here, but for now, I don't want any text on here. Then we'll add a, uh, a border 
and maybe we'll make it black this time because I did white the last time and then copy and paste that and we'll add another border paste it again a third time to add another little vertical bar here now I know I'm being very sloppy here with my uh, my borders here but you get the idea on on how you could add borders between your individual videos here now again there's a, a wide range of effects that this could be used for I see this every once in a while on some YouTube videos and on TV and stuff like that but this is how you could create this in uh, Adobe Premiere Elements version 13. All right, in just a few short minutes, we went through five neat picture-in-pictures. Uh, I hope you learned something, and uh, thanks for watching.